this is what the question says. A uh, string on the violin has a length of some length L. So let me have some representation here. Uh, kind of the end point of the string and it um, the distance between the end point is L. Oh, it, ha it has a mass of zero point mass. Um, this is gonna be important, so I'm gonna uh, save it for use. It says the fundamental frequency of the string is one kilohertz. Um, and this is where you have to know something about standing waves. So um, in a kind of um, waves on uh, something like a violin, so waves on a string where the end points are fixed, this is what the standing waves on, in this kind of setup looks like. The lowest frequency or the fundamental frequency um, oscillation, it'll look like this. Uh, as a snapshot, uh, it'll kind of, and then over time, this will oscillate back and forth so that it looks like this. That's the fundamental um, stand, uh, frequency standing wave. If you go to higher harmonics, then you will get additional nodes in between. So that this is what a first harmonic looks like. The second harmonic will look like this with an additional node. So that it looks like this. So it's uh, important that you know what the standing wave looks like so that you can relate the lengths that are given to the wavelength of the wave that we are talking about. So here, um, I hope you kind of recognize it from the shape that what you see here is only half a wave. For a full wavelength, it has to continue on to here. So that's the, so the total distance from here to here, that is the full wavelength. So what, which tells you that the length that's given is a half of the full wavelength for the fundamental harmonic. So um, the question asks for the speed of the wave. It looks like I'm given everything I need for that. I know the frequency. So if I use that relationship, wave speed is equal to frequency times wavelength. Then I have the frequency, I have the wavelength, I can just calculate the wave speed. So wave speed is equal to frequency, 1000 Hertz, times the um, wavelength, which is, the, uh, which is two times that length. So two times the length, let me do it in SI units or the basic SI units, so 0 0.185 meters. So plugging all those numbers, I should get oh, thousand times two times zero point one eight five. Three seventy uh, meters per second is what I get for speed of the wave. Three seventy. Now, up to here, you only had to use wave properties and general knowledge about standing wave. Now, when it's asking for tension in the string, this is where you have to memorize that one formula about wave speed for waves on a string. So it's something you have to memorize. <laughs> and the memorize the formula is, is for the kind of wave, uh, speed of the wave, on string, the wave speed is given by this formula, square root of tension per linear mass density. So um, I already have the wave speed, so I need to solve this for tension. Let me do that. When I do that, I get tension is equal to um, wave speed squared times the linear mass density. Ah, so this is must be why they gave us the mass. And they also gave us the length. So I need to work out the linear mass density. I really want to work it out in the units of kilograms per meter so that I don't have to worry about units. I can kind of trust that the basic SI units will work out. 
So let me do, just do this in calculator. So uh, the string has the total mass of uh, so 0.86 grams, which is, uh, well, 0.86 times 10 to the minus 3 kilograms. That's the mass divided by the length, uh, which is 18.5 centimeters or uh, 0 0.1185 kilograms. Uh, uh, sorry, meters. Okay. Yeah. So let me plug in those numbers there. So the linear mass density of the, the string is, uh, let me just carry enough um, unit. So 0 0.00465. So 0 0.00465 kilograms per meter. So plug that in then I should get the answer for tension. Let me do that on calculator. Speed, wave speed of 370 meters per second squared times the linear mass density of 0 0.00, oops, too many zeros, 465. And I'm just gonna trust that you need to all work out and that gets me um, 636.6 newtons, 636. Okay, I might, uh, I might have a rounding issue. If I do, I'll just redo the calculation in all from alpha so that I, I'm not um, doing any intermediate rounding. Um, so 636.6 newtons. Yeah, I have rounding issue again. <laughs> so let me do this in all from alpha. So you know from alpha, speed of square, 70, 370. Um, oh, let me do it this way, meter, meters per second squared. And I'm going to use the fact that Wolfram alpha is aware of unit. So um, uh, for the linear mass density, I'm just gonna put in 0 0.6 grams per 18.5 centimeters. And Wolfram alpha will just work out the unit for me. And then it'll give me an answer in Newton's and yeah, there it is. It's a 336 even newtons, not 0.6. So let me plug that in. <laughs> Once again, it's getting fixed. Uh, it's taking a little bit of time. Um, pass, no, that 370 was even. Um, Three, um, I'm not quite sure why it's uh, complaining. Uh, okay, let me just do this. <laughs> this is why we are getting these uh, rounding issues fixed. Uh, I'm just gonna do a parameter search, which is I mean, you know, you shouldn't need to do this. Um, assuming I didn't make any mistake, uh, did I make a mistake? Don't think I made a mistake. Um, but um, so this is obviously a rounding issue. The, it, there's a possibility that the the answer key um, rounds to something prematurely, and that's why it ends up with this. Who knows? Where did I put in the wrong number here? You know, I don't know, but um, you know, it's uh, once again, it's because it's enforcing a four significant figure thing, which it'll, it'll get fixed. <laughs> but if you do run into issue like this, I guess the you can do what I just did, which is a parameter search, kind of a clutchy thing to do. 
Um, another thing you can do is just to uh, use message instructor, send me a message. I can check for you if your answer is close enough and it's just not scored as correct because um, of rounding issue. Um, but it's getting fixed. So, so, so yeah. Um, so, oh, oh. And I said I would use this setup to illustrate one situation where when the wave speed changes, it's not the frequency that remains the same, but it's the wavelength that will remain the same. This setup is an example of that. Because uh, think through it here. Um, imagine, you, you can imagine changing the tension. And if you change the tension, that will change the wave speed. Then thinking through that, realizing that you have this relationship here that um, you have this relationship here that ties these three dynamical quantities together. If you change the tension so that the speed changes, how should the frequency and or wavelength change? This is where the setup is a little bit different from earlier question. There's nothing here that forces the frequency to be the same because this is the wave source. So the frequency gets determined at the wave source <laughs> and you're changing something at the source. So frequency could change. Um, and as you think through it, I hope you will realize that the wavelength has to change the, uh, sorry, wavelength has to stay the same because the wavelength is determined by physical parameters of the thing that sets up the standing wave. As long as the distance between the end points remain the same, and as long as we are talking about the fundamental frequency, there's nothing that will change the wavelength from this relationship here. That wavelength of the standing wave get that gets set up is twice the length of the uh, string here. So as you change everything else, as you change the tension, um, the, if this length stays the same, that will enforce the wavelength being constant. So this is an example of a scenario where as the wave speed changes, the wavelength won't change. So it's the frequency that has to change. And in fact, that's how they, people tune musical instruments. Um, so, that's a, so whenever you are dealing with that kind of change kind of question uh, where someone tells you uh, one parameter changes, um, you have to have some additional piece of knowledge that you know from familiarity with the particular situation, uh, which of the remaining quantities stay constant or if they change, how they change. 